you know, that vision the Buddha had before he went into the forest. He said everywhere he looked in the world, everything was already laid claim to. So if he was going to try to find happiness in the world, he would have to fight other people off. So rather than do that, he looked for happiness someplace else. He looked for the happiness inside. That we didn't have to fight people off. We find that as we meditate, you hear watching your breath. No one else is trying to push you out of the way to watch your breath. There's no competition. The breath is fully yours. You're inhabiting a part of your awareness that only you can know about the body and the mind as they're felt from within. And this is your territory. But because no one else can move in here, don't think that there is no competition. You look inside yourself, there are a lot of other voices, a lot of other attitudes that would pull you away from the practice. And they all sound like you, because they all have been you at one point or another. And those are the things you have to fight off. The Buddha had Mara. Someone you could actually see. In our case, we have our Maras as well, but they're the minions or the, the troops of Mara. All their defilements are all lined up, ready to pull us away from the practice. So you are in competition with those. Because if you have the feeling there's no competition, after a while it's easy to get lazy. And laziness, of course, is one of the defilements. You say, I can do this at my own pace. I'll do enough to get by. But how much is enough to get by? And how are you defining getting by? If it's enough not to get criticized by others? That's a pretty low bar. The high bar is set by death. Are you ready to go? What are you holding on to that would make it hard to go? Because death can come very quickly, unexpectedly. When I was young, we lived in a town in Kansas. There was an old Indian mound out to the west of town. But the mound was named not after the Indians, but after someone who had set up an inn next to the mound. And it was discovered after many years of this person running the inn. But they would wait for someone who was coming on the trail going west, wanted to spend the night. They'd wait for someone who came alone. They had a table where the person could eat food, and then the room where the person was supposed to stay. But they would place the chair over a trap door. And as the person was sitting down to the meal, they'd open the trap door. The chair would fall down, and someone down in the basement would kill him. Death is like that. It's like a trap door. You think you're settling down to something nice and easy, like a nice meal. All of a sudden, whoops, you're someplace else. That's it. And now you're ready to go. If you've just been getting by, you're not going to have the skills you're going to need. The Buddha talks about future dangers, aging, illness, death, social unrest, a split in the Sangha. When these things come, he says, 
It's going to be really hard to practice. And so you have to practice now. And you have to practice to the level where you know. Indeed, if, even if aging comes, illness comes, death comes, social unrest comes, a split in the Sangha comes, your mind is solid enough so that it doesn't have to suffer. Whereas in the Mangala Sutta, you want to get the mind so that even when it's touched by the ways of the world, gain, loss, status, loss of status, praise, criticism, pleasure, pain, it doesn't shake at all. That's the standard you want. So if you're shaken by criticism, you're not up to standard yet. If you're shaken by praise, you're not up to standard yet. Which means we all have work to do. We can't just get by. We may not be fighting anyone else as we sit here to practice. But we do have to fight our defilements. And you have to recognize, yes, they are defilements. That's one of those concepts that Western Buddhists don't like to hear about. They like to hear that the mind is innately good, innately luminous, and that the luminosity and the goodness are the same thing. And so the practice is simply a matter of getting in touch with your true nature. In fact, the less you do, the better. That's what we want to hear. But you look at the mind. And it's hard to say that it's innately anything. It has all kinds of potentials. And whichever ones are following, those are the ones we're strengthening. So if you're following your laziness, your laziness is going to become strong. If you follow your conceit, your conceit becomes strong. And then these things take over. And when they take over, it's not in your best interest. So remember, you are in competition. There may not be anyone trying to pull you away from your nose. So they can get and watch your, your breath at your nose in your place. But the defilements will pull you away. And you go with them because you think they're you. Your greed, your anger, your whatever. Well, you don't seem to be too picky about what they are. As long as it's you, you go with them. That's where we all fall down. So it is convenient to look at the farmers not as you, but as other voices in the mind. that don't have your well-being or your true well-being in mind. And you are in competition with them. Now there'll be times when you're going to lose to them, but at least put up a fight before you lose. As John Mahabu used to say, if you don't put up a fight, how can you even say you lose? You just lie down. There wasn't even a fight to begin with. Give it a try. And as you take these defilements on as your opponents, you begin to know them. You begin to understand where they're strong, where they're weak. And it's engaging with them like this that you can get past them. Otherwise, they have a power over the mind. It's pretty mysterious. All they have to do is whisper and you go with them. They're like the subliminal messages on TV. You hardly notice at all that they're there, but they do have an impact. But if you recognize them for what they are, 
that changes the balance of power inside. And so you see that your desire simply to get by is not on your side. It's your enemy. It's your opponent. And that means you have to develop a stronger sense of the you who wants to practice and the you who wants to excel at the practice. And given our nature that we work hard only at jobs where there is competition, we learn to excel in areas where there is competition because the competition forces it. You have to develop that same attitude inside. You want to excel at the practice so that you will be beyond the power of all the defilements that have ruled your life for who knows how long. So remember, we're not just getting by. We're here to excel. And when you can tell yourself that in all seriousness and all honesty, that's when you're really on the path. <laughs>